Zombie apocalypse, you say? <laughs> you ain't seen nothing, boy. Try the comment section on YouTube. You'll see some real zombies there. Who doesn't like fancy intros, eh? So, here's my review of the Zombie Tools Die Force, which is a design that they have released in March 2014. So it's pretty fresh at this point. And it's offered on their website zombietools.net for $649.95. And I've put it through its paces. Well, I should probably say I've put it through hell because whenever I have a really sturdily built tank of a sword, I'd like to find out just how much of a tank it is. And was not disappointed. This thing can take a serious beating. And the main reason is that it's made of 5160 spring steel, which is well known for being extremely strong and tough and uh, really hard to mess up. If you haven't seen the video of the tests, it'll be down there in the video description. So check it out. And well, after all that really harsh testing, there's not much damage to this whatsoever. I mean, I cut into the blade of a knife with this and also smashed up a large metal can with fairly thick walls. So all kinds of abuse. And this is after about 10 minutes of file work to clean up the edge. There is still some damage nothing major and I could polish it out some more but I don't see the point because this kind of stuff actually adds to the character of the sword. I mean it's a post-apocalyptic themed sword and some battle scars if you will definitely add to the character so nothing wrong with that and it's also a nice thing about the finish it has this aged looking finish and that means that any kind of damage, scratches, uh, stains, rust, whatever, I mean the, the finish is probably pretty resistant to corrosion and such but even if you had some it just kind of adds to it. The way they made the grip is well, it's simply the most secure way of attaching a grip that you can have. Simply because they sandwiched the tang, which is massive as you can see, it's right there, visible. They sandwiched that with steel handle scales and riveted them on. And the rivets, by the way, are polished flush very nicely. And you can see that it is really precise work. Like on cheaper swords or knives, you would see some gaps there where the pieces are put together, but nothing whatsoever. There are no, no gaps, no pitting. There are some irregularities on the surface, like here, for instance. But as far as I can tell, they are entirely intentional. It's just to give it that aged, used look. And there's nothing that compromises the integrity of the material. If you look at here from the side, you won't see any pitting or imperfections there. It's all just on the surface. I'm not going to talk much about strength and durability because it has already proven itself in the tests. I've done things to it that you would normally never do and it held up just fine. Also, this type of steel is tried and true. There's no question about that. So, no problem. But uh, let's talk about the blade as far as the geometry is concerned. So, we have a overall lenticular shaped cross section and they added a fuller to the blade. The grind is nice and even. The symmetry overall is very good. 
And looking at the blade, you can see that it's made mainly for toughness. You could make the sword thinner in the cross section without weakening it too much, and that would reduce the resistance you get in the cut. The thinner and finer the blade is, the more easily you can cut into material. So this sacrifices a bit of just sheer cutting ability for durability. As you can see, it has a secondary bevel, meaning this right here where the edge is, it's not a smooth transition into the rest of the blade. So this also puts up a bit more resistance when doing a cut. From what I can tell, it does seem to have a distal taper, but not much. It's a little thicker uh, near the hilt than it is towards the point, but it's not a dramatic difference. The leaf blade shape definitely assists in cutting because you have a bit more mass towards the end and also you basically have a slightly curved edge towards the end, as you can tell. So you basically have a straight blade shape, which still has a partially curved edge. So that does help with the cutting ability, but this is more of a chopping and cleaving action rather than fine slicing, which considering the fantasy setting that it's themed for fighting against zombies, that seems appropriate. It would be pretty good for splitting undead skulls and uh, cutting into bone, things of that nature. Rather brutal, dirty work, if you will. And it would be exceptionally good in the thrust. It's a very rigid blade and combined with the leaf shape and the fairly fine point at the end, you can imagine that this would do a lot of damage. Let's talk about how it handles. First of all, the weight. It weighs 1.44 kilograms or three pounds and three ounces, which is not heavy if you just look at the object itself. And most people, if they pick it up, they will not say that it's heavy at all. However, if you compare it to some historical swords, which I know it's not supposed to be historical whatsoever, but if you compare it to something like this, the Albion Caithness, this one actually has a longer blade, but it's still lighter and it feels a lot more nimble in the hand and more lively. Usually I would not make the comparison because this is a high-end production sword, but then again, the Diphos doesn't cost much less. If I wasn't spoiled by swords like that, I probably wouldn't notice anything because like I said, this is not particularly heavy. And also uh, the point of balance is not that far away from the hilt compared to some other fantasy designs. Like this is about nine centimeters or three and a half inches away from the hilt which is not bad at all. The caithness is actually a bit longer and has a substantially longer blade. And that's also the odd thing about the Diphos. It's basically a sword with a two-handed grip on a one-handed blade. And it's not even particularly long even for a one-handed blade. In fact, it's only a bit longer than a gladius blade, which is pretty short, as I'm sure you know. It's about 100 grams heavier than this long sword, and you can clearly see a huge difference in the length. So this sword in and of itself is not heavy. If you pick it up, you probably find that, hey, it's, it's pretty you know, easy to move around, no big deal. It's really just in the direct comparison with more historically inspired swords or even reproductions that you notice that, well, it is substantially heavier than most other swords in that length and not quite as lively. And just to go by the zombie apocalypse setting, this kind of criticism is, of course, just for fun, but it's a fun sword, so I think it's appropriate. If I were to face zombies, I'd prefer something longer because I want them to be as far away from me as possible. So I prefer to be able to attack them when they are at a longer distance, which this kind of length would make a little nastier because you would have to get significantly closer. One thing that I would personally prefer, but that is not really necessary, considering the theme of the sword, is a longer cross guard. 
This is a pretty small guard, as you can see. It, it is somewhat reminiscent of a Chinese Gen guard. And, well, it does the job of preventing your hand from sliding upward. Uh, pairing with it, not so much. That wouldn't really work too well. But, who cares, right? It's supposed to be used against zombies. You're not supposed to fence with it against another person with a sword. So, it doesn't really matter for that. It's nice to see that they improved the leather wrapping on the grip. When I reviewed the first Reaver Cleaver, this was a lot harder and rougher leather. And that meant that these overlapping pieces here were pretty abrasive on the hand. So it wasn't overly comfortable. But uh, this here is noticeably softer and doesn't rub against your hand that much. It still offers a lot of traction. And if you were to use it for prolonged periods of time, I would still recommend gloves, but it is noticeably better. So that's nice. It comes with a Kydex sheath, which is nice and sturdy and offers you a lot of options for attaching it. With all these eyelets, you could thread paracord through it and attach it in all kinds of ways on your belt or on your back if you insist or however you want and it holds the sword fairly securely you'll hear it snap in place and because of the weight of the sword you can't expect it to stay in there if you shake it but it's definitely works well enough and uh, quite a nice cheese. So overall, it is a very well-made sword, high quality materials, a really good fit and finish. Everything is super tight. And this thing is about as close to indestructible as you can get with a sword. At least you would have a really hard time trying to destroy this unless you use high caliber firearms, which would be stupid, right? So what about the negative sides? I always try to find both pros and cons. In this case, it's a little difficult because some of the things that I personally don't like quite as much are not something that you can actually criticize this design for. Like, for instance, the small guard is something that I personally don't really like, but it doesn't matter for a sort of this design. Again, the theme, fictional zombies, yeah, it doesn't matter. The handling, again, is something that I'm not overly thrilled with, simply because I am kind of spoiled by reproductions of historical swords, which tend to have really excellent handling, tend to be very nimble and lively, and just feel amazing when you pick them up. This here, nothing wrong with it. When I pick it up, I don't go, oh, what's this sharpened crowbar? No, definitely not. There's no problem with the handling, really. It just doesn't feel as good and agile as some other swords that I've handled. But I find it hard to criticize the sword for it because, again, it's not made for blade-on-blade -blade fencing. You don't have to change direction that quickly and just be super agile about it. A maybe more valid objection is the price, I would say. I do understand why they charge $650 for it, because it is made in the US, so you have to take the higher wages into consideration. It's not going to be possible to produce it as cheap as something that's made in China, for instance. And I'm sure there are tons of work hours that go into this, no doubt. And it's also high quality steel. And, you know, seeing how precisely it is ground and fitted, it seems appropriate. The only question is, does it offer enough for you to justify $650? As far as I'm concerned, personally, and I hope that the guys from Zombie Tools are not going to take this the wrong way, I very much appreciate that they've sent it to me. It was awesome to be able to test it, and I'm very grateful for it. But I wouldn't personally have spent $650 on this sword, simply because it's, I'm more interested in historically accurate reproductions. It's not that I don't like fantasy swords, but I just really am a big fan of the way that historical swords handle, just because they are so agile and just feel awesome in the hand. And it's from this, it's only another about $200 up to, or maybe even 
100, 150 in some cases, up to something that suits my personal taste a little better. So it's just something that you'll have to decide for yourself. If you're not that interested in ancient or medieval swords, then this may be just the thing for you, because it is about the same quality level, like in terms of how well it is made and how well the steel holds up. So if you like the style, go for it, no problem. So I'm afraid my verdict may be a little vague. It's kind of, if you like the style enough, to justify the cost for you personally, then I would definitely recommend it because the quality is there. I haven't seen anything else that is styled like this. The only other thing that is somewhat similar in theme is the tactical swords made by Angus Trim, but it's still not the same style, especially the finish and the overall look is just pretty unique for zombie tools blades. So yes, it is a rather steep price and I would be more comfortable in recommending it if it cost say 450, 500, but it's still really good quality that you're getting for it. So that's all I can say really. Hope it was helpful and thanks for watching.